come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast, where a movie talk show and review podcast comes your way every Saturday, whether you're ready for it or not, in our quest for total world domination. You can help us out with that by going over to wherever you found us and hitting that like or subscribe button. All of that stuff helps us get found by other like-minded folks like you. And these are the internet radio superstars. Michaela. Sean. Holly. And I'm Colin. And tonight we watch the movie that was chosen by... Colin. Colin. Where did you take us tonight? We, I took what you back. Era did you take us back to to the nineties? Oh, the 90s. why? For like you, not good, even not, not the good nineties. Like this is the well, grun- the grungy nineties. The grungy, this is, yeah. this is the underground nineties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because yeah. that's what from uh, and I apologize to all of you folks at home who blindly followed along with us here. I mean, granted, this was <laughs> a, a trip. When you guys are picking 90s movies, I'm always like, oh, yeah, those are the 90s movies that I was like studiously avoiding or like always kind (laughs) of, you know, uh, the movie, sorry, is uh, Habit. Habit. Uh, Habit. And it's um, Mm -hmm. from Uh, 19. uh, Larry Fessenden is the director from 1996. All right. So fill us in on, well, we're talking about 90s and Larry Fessenden, but continue with your 90s thoughts. Well, there was um, okay. Well, you, you have to help me out with this and see if this ha- also happened to you. At so what you were point, saying is you hated our you hate our nineties movies. And yeah, and this and is the wanted, response, and you wanted to take revenge. Uh, Got it. For uh, Got well, it. The 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 feeling that I had in the nineties was that specifically with horror movies that they were they had really become super um, like neutered horror movies they kind of took all the sex and violence out of them and you know i mean obviously there are some really good ones you know the sure. scream movies and yeah. candy man and the six Sense blair witch all that but they're all very like glossy and polished too yeah. you know when you look at like valentine or deep rising yeah. or yeah. you know all of these things they're overblown and you know the seed the relic and right. stuff like it's that still very slick looking you right kind of maybe miss the human element very yeah. highbrow yeah mm-hmm. through more in this movie so there you go. I guess maybe that was the thing. So does this uh, does this happen to everybody? You go through like a period. This movie? No, no, never no. happened to me. You're, you're a kid and you watch a bunch of movies. You become kind of a movie fan and they're movies and you know, they're awesome. And then somewhere in your 20s, you all of a sudden everybody around you like is they're like they're films. You know, they're not movies. Huh? Oh, films, yeah. Like, no, everyone goes through their pretentious <laughs> film stage <laughs> where like films, they yeah. just yeah. like look down their nose at anything mainstream. And yeah, oh, yep. yeah. Usually, yeah. Early 20s. And by your mid 20s, you should be outgrowing that. OK, well, that's, yeah, that's I I'm, <laughs> yeah. yep, I'm taking you back then. So this okay. was that oh, era. Gr- great. Oh, I, I don't know, know if I, I want to revisit I this. Know. I felt <laughs> every <laughs> second of this. Yes. Yeah, back into there every second. But what I I guess what I liked about that era was it felt like this was like the the 90s wave of independent filmmaking, right? Mm -hmm. Where it became such a huge thing that we got, you know, the independent film channel out of it. We got the independent spirit awards. Yeah. Um, Every I mean, the rise of mirrors. We had the um, like every major Hollywood label came up with their sub label. That was just for their yep. quote unquote indie stuff that they'd acquire yep. at film festivals. I mean, this was like a whole uh, movement, you know, that was like mm-hmm. kind of it was like rebel filmmaking is what it felt like. It was like the anti uh, establishment Hollywood stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We're just going to run around this city and set up a camera here and capture yeah. life. Yeah. Because that's what they were go- all going for. Yeah. Right. There's right. this kind of reality. It came with a thing called cinema verite. Mm-hmm. Um, which obviously was like pioneered by the French in the sixties and the seventies went through it. We were also, I kind of conjured this movie by, if you've been following along on our show, uh, we were talking about, uh, John Cassavetes yep. on, uh, last week's episode was that last week, that last Skeleton week, week before, yeah. Uh, sorry. Yes. And, uh, so he was obviously the pioneer of this type of movie. This is like a nineties movie looking back kind of at like a Cassavetes <laughs> thing. It seems like, like a, we went from Hen and Lauder to Fessenden. Like I think, yeah. there's a, I think there's a jump there. Yeah, but yeah, you, yeah. If you did like Basket Case yeah. and Habit, you know, it's like there is a similar kind of because yeah. they're Not capturing just the main characters running around naked at a certain point. It's <laughs> like that feels like it's uncomfortable to do that in New York at any point. <laughs> but yes, this feels like there's a similarity. Uncomfortable? Why? Because of uh, like you're saying like the sanitary conditions of the <laughs> the city itself. It's I mean, just- New York at this time, I don't, I wouldn't want to run around naked in it. Mm-hmm. I'd be, yes, I'd be more apt to do it now. 
I'm not what sure there's there? any time that I want to run around naked in no, New York. Not no, a, it's not a... It's <laughs> nope, don't think like, so. All right, New York, you and me. I'm don't think it. so. Okay. <laughs> you say go. that like it's a private thing, Sean. It's just me in New York. I mean, this. when I run around naked in New York, it's a private thing. It's just me in New York hanging out. Sean is dating the city. <laughs> there you go. I mean, I mean, New York, but that's also a thing that I think these movies kind of capture is that like that New York is like a character. Yeah. Yes. In a way, because there's always like overheard conversations of people on the street or cutaways to, you know, like the minutia of life in the city that yeah. you know, it's like you can almost smell it. It's grime rubs off. And it's a very but grimy like, movie. But then they like to hit on like the landmarks of New York to make sure that you're reminded that they're in New York. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. We saw the World Trade Center a lot. But they're always <laughs> shooting them like handheld or street level yeah. to uh -huh. kind of give it that kind of you know so it doesn't have like a gloss or like nicely composed right um shots it's not nicely lit it just feels like we went out with a camera that's mm -hmm. like it's not, grainy it's not as nicely hell. anything <laughs> yeah. it doesn't feel like I mean, a, camera, the 90s, a camera that we barely know how to use is yep. what it feels like it feels like <laughs> we'll figure this out on the spot well this was like a that's style fun, yeah but they 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 all i mean if you look at like clerks i mean any, yeah. any of these guys like early movies that came out of that era aside from quentin tarantino right his first movie is like a slick polished low budget thing everybody else with went with the like we're gonna do handheld we're gonna shoot it all handheld with natural light and all this other well, stuff. when you have a script and a story and a, and a direction to go you can kind of build around more of that when you're just kind of I don't want to say improvising, but you're going just going with the by flow. the seat of your pants, <laughs> kind of gorilla-ish. Yeah, these guys are. It's yeah, a little different. This movie had a lot of like insert shots of just complete non sequiturs, you know. Mm -hmm. And clearly, it's clearly like they just shot that and they were like, "That'd be cool, put that in." Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, but again, I think it's their. I think they're thinking, regardless of how it comes off, is mm -hmm. they're thinking that they're they're adding this like authentic flavor you yes. know it's giving you something it's like metadata to the movie or the story it's, you know? spice, Colin, it's, spice. <laughs> it's the spice so you can taste the movie yeah i can smell the movie well yeah, yeah, sean no came up with a new uh because we already established the movie <laughs> that, what do we say movies from the 80s have the 80s stank on them and the stank and we're we're slowly developing a vocabulary for 90s movies mm -hmm. i think that's where we're that's that's the era i think we're going back and visiting a lot yeah. more shiny ones are the ooze mm -hmm. yes. what are one, the, what the are ones like ooze. what are ones like this sean uh the the 90s fuzz yes kind of feels like it's in your mouth it's gritty yeah. and, like, and it, everything's I, dusty it is grimy yeah. everything's like, yeah dusty yeah i yeah. got the sweaters on my teeth and they're always <laughs> like shooting on 16 millimeter yeah. film or something to mm -hmm. kind of give it yeah. that added like grit or grittiness mm -hmm. to it yeah um and they drug the film Put it on screen. That's yeah. what it kind of like. feels like. Yeah. Well, I I always thought that the art direction of uh like '90s New York movies they always kind of had this. Um, I I don't know. I'm I'm from the Midwest, so this was like <laughs> you know this is like this alien thing that you're looking at, like the attitudes, behaviors of uh New York. I guess this is like the art circle or whatever that you know community theater uh, folks. Um, but they're living in these ancient homes that are all like the plasters peeling off the wall or the paints coming down you know everything's yeah. like mismatched or crowded oh yeah this is that when you live in places like this is like that's why when we mentioned the uh the chairs in the movie mm -hmm. how they were mismatched and everything that's mm -hmm. living in this area you find like that's a pretty good chair you find that you bring it in you paint it to look like the rest of them it's just it's eclectic you're collecting yeah, a yeah. Li it feels like you're collecting a life when mm -hmm. you live in places like but this. does it feel or again is this just me you have to tell me does it feel that like hollywood kind of uh, uh adopted this um art direction style it maybe found its zenith in like fight club Mm -hmm. or something right where it's yep. like we're that, gonna go all that would be the, the <laughs> slick version of it they're just like we see all this we can but still pretty grimy yes oh, it's still very <laughs> yeah. grimy but yeah. We, yeah yeah but like that paper house uh ha the paper street house that they yeah. live in is mm -hmm. like okay we're gonna we're gonna go for that grimy yes. you know the wallpaper is yellow it well looks... and that whole movie has that weird green filter over it too yeah. to make it, it look yeah, it have muddy you know that's very true. Mm -hmm. Which is, we, I wonder if that also came from uh, like the indie era because green, obviously you see some of these movies and they have like green fluorescence and you're like, what's going on? Mm -hmm. And it's uh, apparently with a photochemical with, uh, with film, you have to put a filter on it to correct the luminance of fluorescent light fluorescent light untreated reads as green and so in the 90s they're like we don't need fucking <laughs> we, yeah we're just, yeah. yeah, it's green and that's how, that's it's how look. it looks yeah. on film. It's green. Yeah. Um, Gives it a very sickly 
that sickly 90s green look. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so Larry Fessenden's the other guy uh, that we mentioned. Um, I know I've talked about him before. Mm-hmm. I mean, his face, right? He's also, he's the writer, director, star of this movie. Have you seen him in anything before? Uh, watching him tonight, I'm just like, he looks familiar, but then I don't know if uh, he just looks like a 90s. No idea. Exact 90s, like, <laughs> drug, alcohol addict. Like, he, I mean, he fits it perfectly. I think I've seen him in some other stuff. I can't remember, but he's very familiar. Pinky in the brain. He's he is he is the brain. <laughs> he is the brain. He has a head. He is the, head of the human brain. version of the brain. He's kind of got a distinctive look. He's got a very high forehead, and he's missing a tooth. Apparently, mm-hmm. that was knocked out by some Brooklyn toughs. He was defending his girlfriend at one point, and mm-hmm. somebody punched him in the mouth. Did he and ever so, get fixed? Uh, depending on the movie you see, he does yeah. have. Uh, he can yeah. fix it or <laughs> leave it um, out. He has a partial. Yeah. Um. I guess. Uh, Fessenden is like. Because he's strictly like a horror film director. Um, he made a movie before this. It was called No Telling, and it was kind of like an eco Frankenstein kind of thing. This was his second movie? This was his second movie. Wow. His third was a movie called Wendigo, and his fourth was a movie called The Last Winter. Both of those were about the Wendigo. And this is why he became the Wendigo guy. He made a movie, I think, for the sci-fi channel or chiller called Beneath. And then just um, depraved, which is the Frankenstein in a New York loft. Um, but in the meantime, All right. I'm most interested in that one. Yeah, you might like it, There's, actually. Yeah. I mean, it's like I want to see at least one Wendigo movie from this guy. Well, the, the, okay. that one's the Frankenstein one, the depraved. But yeah, yeah I mean, yeah, he, no, has, but, yeah. he has a, he has uh, he's he's developed a different style, I guess. Gotcha. Uh, but it's like an amplified version of this. Mm-hmm. I don't know how to describe it. Um, I don't know if I need this at an intense. Level. <laughs> is it like Frankenhooker kind of like no, it's, treatment? No, it's no. like okay. serious. Like oh. you know, well, he's that's doing the problem. Like yeah. Yeah. Oh no, I imagine he's a very serious. But it has filmmaker. um, what's the uh, Josh from uh, Blair Witch Project? Oh, yeah. uh, he's basically Polidori in that story. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but I guess what he's is, and he's also been an actor in some big uh, movies. Like he was in. Um, uh, yeah, was I was he? just looking through that. The Brave One, I remember he was in... He was a DJ um, in Southbound. We've seen him in... Well, he was in Session 9, which we did on this show. He was in... Um, uh, am I blanking out here? You're next. Chinese Puzzle. Oh, was he? And he... Yeah. But, I mean, he's been in, like, a bunch of stuff, but he also produces. And I guess that's, like, his main thing is kind of, like, Ty West got his start through Larry Fessenden's company. Interesting. Uh, House of the Devil was his. All the Ty West movies, I think. Uh, Stakeland. Um, mm-hmm. You know, so he's yep. been kind of like, in New York, I guess, it's kind of, the way I've heard it described is if you're an independent film, or you know, you're somebody who wants to start up, you basically either go to Lloyd Kaufman or Larry Fessenden, <laughs> you know, and they'll give you a job doing something on some low budget um, sure. Independent film, uh, and he's also doing a podcast called Tales from Beyond the Pale right now, which is like audio dramas. And he writes for video games because he did um, Until Dawn, and uh, which is another one to go yep. story. And he also did um, what are there was like these things that are out right now. Um, that's like a, a series of video, uh, like horror kind of video games that come out like every two months or something for the PlayStation. I can't remember the title, but mm-hmm. um, and the other thing that kind of has a confluence at this point in time is the return of like the cultural fascination with vampires. Um, yeah. Yeah. Cause what is hunger the same year? No, maybe hunger year is 83. Is that, um, I think it, vampires kiss is around That's this time. Isn't it? 80. Is it? Maybe, maybe I don't know. Nineties vampire movies. Maybe not. Maybe. Uh, Cause yeah, I'm trying to think of something here too, but well, I'm trying to, cause there's also like the rise of like the goth, uh, movement, you know, that yeah. you kind of have, which is tied in. I always thought that that started with like vampires, you know, it's everybody wants to dress in black and paint their faces white, you know, or whatever. And, yeah. um, but it seemed to me that there, the start of it, at least that Hollywood took note was, um, there was, uh, um, Francis Ford Coppola said that he was going to do, uh, Dracula. Mm-hmm. And I think the year that he said he was going to do that, I think like Buffy the Vampire Slayer came out. Mm -hmm. And in between, I think um, like Francis, you know, Coppola's Dracula, which then, of course, kicked off. Then we got to do interview with the vampire. Mm -hmm. And in the middle there, 
there was like this massive fascination with vampires in movies and at least three New York filmmakers made their New York vampire movie. Uh, there was one called uh, Nadja and then there was one called the addiction that was uh, Abel Ferrara and has Lily mm. Taylor in it and Christopher Walken. And then there was nice. Larry Fessenden's. Uh, <laughs> so the addiction habit. not to be confused with habit. Right. Yeah. Right, right. <laughs> yeah we, it seems like there's uh, uh yeah, what are we going for here? <laughs> of the nineties. It seems like they found an inroad at, to tell this story again. Like, yeah. Yeah. Something, you know, uh, with, you know, inside blood, all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Cause it's Drugs. like the, any, well, yeah, this is disease. like definitely about the heroin crisis of the '90s, right? Like, heroin, AIDS. Yeah, I mean, it's, mm -hmm. yeah, it's like yeah, it's rolling those two things mm -hmm. maybe together, um, and that's what they're going to go after. This one adds alcoholism to it, but it's any kind of like self-destructive, addictive, mm -hmm. uh, you know, pastime. Uh, <laughs> you know, that yes. you, you would involve yourself in. All right, so um, with that out of the way, what's this movie about? Good question, Colin. Really, you had that much of a problem with it. It's a, it's a slice of life. You want to see a guy do some everyday shit in New York? Here you go. <laughs> okay. Yes. I mean, it, yeah. It's, I mean, it's, it's a it's about a guy in a rebound, Colin. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, so that's uh, also probably would disqualify it as a Saturday Night Freak Show movie. Again, I, I'm apologizing, but so it's basically... <laughs> Colin, it's, it's okay. You don't need to apologize to us. We'll all get our chance to speak our piece. You're allowed yeah. to feel your own way yes. about this movie. Yeah. Yes. Feelings. Yes. And, uh, and you, you we'll did give you ours. You did say before we even started the movie that you're working through some things. Yeah. So. Well, just the nostalgia for that time. I think that, you know, it's like everybody in the film world, it seemed like, uh, and not that I was in the film world, but, you know, uh, had their head so far up their own asses that, yeah. you know, it was, it was exciting because you didn't know what was coming next. I guess that was the thing. It's like, you know, everybody was, all these filmmakers were doing like experimental stuff yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, where they were just trying out things. And mm -hmm. so, you know, it made the film scene kind of like alive, you know, you mm -hmm. didn't know what you were going to, and then eventually that petered out and now, you know, exactly what you're getting every time you get, you know, there's no risk right. involved. That's true. Mm -hmm. that yeah. is true. I, I do respect that the craft of this movie and that it's like a singular vision and, and, you know, clearly a passion project and like, he got out there and did the thing and it's on Blu-ray. You know, that's yeah. that's an accomplishment, something to be proud of. It was a collection Just, and we are talking about. It. Right, exactly. What if I so told he did you something. That this was the second time he made this movie. Uh is that why there's another credit for it? God damn it. <laughs> so in nineteen eighty, huh. apparently in when he was or uh, an or undergrad. Yeah, I was gonna say, was this his thesis? It Colin? was his thesis I movie. I fucking knew God, it. God, this it feels it. like a thesis. <laughs> yeah. It and he remade like a growing it. filmmaker. I yeah. knew yeah. it. <laughs> Going back to that. Yeah, because he's not like the star in uh, his other films. That's why it's like this one feels well, probably because like, it was part of the assignment. You can't star in your own movie. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, his other. Uh, no, he, he. Sorry. He does star in the original version. Oh, okay. And he stars in this one, which is basically the remake. The original was like shot on video or something, you know. Mm. Um, but he doesn't star in his other films. So that's why it's like, is this one like the autobiographical thing? I mean, I guess he you, was also going through some shit. You feel that, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. This feels like, I mean, it's 90s. It feels very, there's there's an angst to it. I yeah. mean, they're not young, but you can have angst at any this point. This was in your definitely life. his therapy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And in the uh, 90s, of course, it's like uh, performance art and all this other yes. stuff. And yeah. Workshopping, yes, it is. <laughs> uh, your ideas out with, um, you know, uh, I guess that's where you're ad libbing and doing all that stuff. A lot of uh, naked running around streets to expose yep. yourself as an actor. So do you do you know about the rest of the cast of this film at all, Colin? Only were, were they his friends? Some of them. There it is. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Some of them were, because, you know, he's in around like a theater group or, you know, right. a, sure. a, right. a film enthusiasts, I suppose, uh, uh, actors and directors and all that stuff. Musicians. You know? Right. It feels yeah. like he was, yeah, around those uh, arty types mm -hmm. and brought them in the movie. Yeah. Yeah. With his musician friends and all that stuff. We decided while watching this, it's like, yeah, Larry Fessenden definitely plays in a band. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But. I'm curious because he does it a couple of times. This doesn't feel like a character thing. This feels like he licks his plate when he's done eating it. And this is all before he has the vamp, like the vampirism. Oh, like yeah, he, this is just a normal a, just, characteristic. Yeah, he's he his normal mode is still much different than most people's normal mode. Like yeah. I don't know what this but, dude's I issue mean, is. Does but. that does that well that particular thing licking the plate? Does that feel like something that an actor would come up with as like I'm going to give this to my character, or is that like 
he does that. No, I felt like that was his. I felt like that was a choice. That was a because I, he I th- does I think, that. I think yeah. it was. I think it was a deliberate like foreshadowing, even though it, it doesn't really make sense or matter. Mm. I yeah. think that was a choice for the I, character. I think, it, I think it shows his willingness to indulge in things without thinking about it. I think it just shows his like he just does it, goes for it, not does. He, he couldn't be got. He couldn't be bothered to give this character a single likable trait. <laughs> That's really? true. Not yeah, a that's single insane. one. No, no, I, no, like, no, I, I no. don't like anything about this. Any I character wouldn't hang out with him. No, he seems annoying as fuck. Yeah, he cannot get his shit together, and I don't want to be hanging out with he's somebody like that. He's super dirty and gross, and ugh. <laughs> oh, he's, he acts like he's always strung out, like always. Yeah. And I, you could tell Keep the crowd that away from me. You can tell the crowd you're talking to because we've all advanced to an age where just like I don't want to deal with that shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We've, all, we've all known someone like yeah. this, yeah. and we're like, yes. I'm fucking done dealing with yes. that. Yes, yeah, it's interesting to look at it. But then, because the reason why I think we have these feelings about '90s filmmaking is because I mean, I think we're all much more closer to it than '80s or '70s filmmaking, obviously. Sure. So the things we see, we may have experienced some version of it before. Mm. And I don't know. It wasn't was nineties really the highlight of anybody's life. Well, I don't know. Like, I'm not going to well, say I mean, not. I mean, part of it is because, I mean, obviously when the, when this came out, I was like eleven years old, right? right like, yeah, so I can't yeah. really relate to it in that aspect. But like, I've I've dated and I've been to guys' apartments that are disgusting yes. like that. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, seriously, grow the fuck up and do your. I've dishes. dated guys like this. Yes, and that's I have why too. I'm just like so repulsed like, by so it. So disgusted yeah. by it. Yeah. I'm so done with it. Yeah, gross. <laughs> grow the fuck up, me an adult. Yes. Like. But is that God. something that, I mean, I get that, because, I mean, obviously, when you watch mm-hmm. it, you do kind of, you know, it's like, yeah. this is a guy who needs desperately to get his shit together yeah. and yeah. can't figure out how to do it, but... But he's not even trying. Not he's not all. even trying to get not his shit at all. together. Okay, but Because he thinks he's great. You yeah. can tell. I guess that's the issue with the character, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, I, get, I didn't take that he was, uh, um, you know, unlikable. He seemed like he was a decent guy, you know? How? Uh, what's decent yeah, what's about the, him? What demonstration do we see of yeah. any good character that he feeds his cat? No, just box? like in his uh, interactions with his friends and all yeah. that, like he would stick up for people. Or he right, cared I feel, about. I like feel that. like he's been there for his friends before. For the people, but they uh, seem exhausted by him. Yeah, loyalty. Oh, sure. <laughs> you can't. They're... You can't go by a person's like loyalty to their best friends. Right. That's different. But well, like, he has a couple of enablers. So I mean, I guess we're yes. talking about like you know he should be getting his shit together, but there's his friends aren't healthy. Well, because he has. Well, I guess it's alcoholism, right? Like yeah. the um, or is maybe just his personality is He's kind of addictive. And those aren't yeah. real or good friends if they're enabling your well, no, especially with addictions. Especially the conversation he has with the friend when they sit there for ten minutes and talk is a horrible friend yeah. conversation. I mean, yeah, they're yeah. going back and forth between you should stop drinking. It's like go get a drink with us. Like there's yeah, yeah. yeah. But, and I mean, just like from the start, like well, the first impression of him is when he's trying to be fucking Cyrano at the Halloween party. It's like pretentious as fuck. Everything he does is like, oh my God, I'm not like other people. Yeah. It, he always has to he's, make a statement with he's everything. He's a total he narcissist. Does. Yes. I'm, it's ugh. yeah. Yeah. Not okay. into it. Interesting. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, yeah. So he's a narcissist. You say that. Uh, so his father has recently yeah. died. He's so tortured, Colin. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You just want to understand he's a tortured artist. Get yeah. the fuck out yeah, of here with that shit. He used to cut yeah. his uh, arms yeah, at, parties. at parties. At yeah. parties he used to do that. Also, for, yeah. For fun. That's like. I, I'm sure we've all been to a party with a guy like that, right? And you're just like, dude, read, read the fucking room. No one thinks this is cool except yeah. you, and you're yeah. killing the vibe. Yeah. Like, you're yeah. like the more deranged version of the guitar guy at a party. Yeah, you know, exactly. The knife guy's here. Yeah. yeah. I was at a party where a dude, like, heated up a beer bottle and, like, scorched himself, like, branded himself. It, yeah. He needed a fucking skin graft later. Like, we've all yeah. seen that fucking yeah. idiot before. And they, like, they just cannot read their room to save their fucking life. They right. think everybody's loving it. And we're, someone could say, shut the fuck up, dude, and they still wouldn't get through to them. Right. Like, it... Uh, they always kill the vibe. They make everybody uncomfortable. As right. Fuck. Yeah. Would so, you, would you would you like to name your? Uh, no, <laughs> no. Point, they know who they, they know who they are. They know who they are. I just, I just don't see anything likable about this guy. You know, Sean, I'm I'm not a particularly social person to begin with. So if I can get out of the house and get to a party, like that's a lot of effort for me to get to that yeah, point. You don't want that. So then when that person shows up and ruins all the hard work I put into being social and being a functioning human, I'm right. just like. Why can't you just have a drink and Why make some conversation? Why can't you just be normal? <laughs> Why can't you just be normal? <laughs> well, I guess I didn't. I didn't. I didn't dislike him as like he's a terrible human being. I feel like they've been friends for like twenty years, yeah, it, and but- that's why they deal with it they do but him it just seemed like you know it's like this is a guy who you know he's like he's 
going underwater, right? I mean, he's oh, like yeah. trying, he, and because he doesn't seem to know how to swim, you know, and he's like way underneath. Like it's all because of he this won't stuff. learn how to swim, Colin. There you go. That's, so, I think it's part of it. He works in a right. at a at a restaurant or a He's bar. He's somehow a fucking manager. Isn't this Four isn't this the way fucking life goes? You got this guy strung out, cannot get his fucking shit together. Li- lives like a filthy hoarder. Pro- you, he smells. He looks like he smells. He definitely in this movie. smells. And yet he's the manager of a restaurant. <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah. Haircut. His mom left him some money. I think that's yeah. what. The- I was gonna She's, say they said a small nest yeah. egg so. until until we got to that little point. I was like, so he works at a restaurant four nights a week and he lives by himself. I don't yeah. think so. So I'm York glad City? they added yeah. that little tidbit that he got some money from his mom. But you yeah. didn't make sense. No, there's bartenders and waitresses working under me like this fucking guy gets to be the manager yeah. are you kidding me oh, i would sure. hate working yeah. for this asshole yeah, exactly. yeah. can you imagine if michaela was a star of quantum leap and she got <laughs> leapt into 1995 new york she's like <laughs> <No>! <laughs> she, i would explode yeah, I, would just, yeah. I would just no i yeah. can't deal with these people <laughs> It's yeah. well the thing is because when you're when you allow these types of people into your life and you are a functioning person, you end up picking the, up the slack for them all the time. All the time. Well, I think that's yep. what's happened, right? Because this is like you said, it's a rebound movie. His girlfriend, so his name is Sam, I guess. Yes. In this, and his girlfriend Eliza is mm-hmm. we, when we start the movie moving out. They haven't really broke up, but maybe they have. It sounds like mm-hmm. it's not entirely. Run, girl, run. Yeah, yeah. Run. Because she's, You're I think, in that position where, yeah. yeah, she knows that like he can't get a handle on his stuff, and right. yeah. she still apparently loves him because the mm-hmm. way she's just like, uh, she can't quite let go of him. Like, yeah, she should have just taken the cat as a fond memory and I mean, left it at that. <laughs> yes. Yeah, but he meets someone Always else take the cat. at mm-hmm. a Halloween party. Anna. And, yeah. So, um, and the the uh, actress who plays her is Meredith Snader, I believe her name yes. is. Never yeah. uh, did anything else. Um, no, she's only think. listed for this like twice. Like, yeah, the nineteen eighty one is. Yeah, well, I yeah. think. But. So I guess you know if, if you're making a vampire movie, I mean, I guess that's your question: is like how um, effective is your uh, believable is your vampire? How did she come off uh, as? The vampire and I mean, for the vampire character that was written, mm-hmm. she's fine. Mm-hmm. I think, yeah, I think she's yeah. pretty good for this. Yeah. you know, especially for this type of movie. Mm-hmm. I think she's good for it. I think she's got the look. Yeah, so what, are which we I go- liked. what are we the going fashion. for? She's got the fashion too. The fashion. Yeah. I assume yeah. they all had to bring their own wardrobe. <laughs> so <laughs> right, yeah. yeah. It's like, what do you? Oh God, I'm getting so many. It said costume de- costume designed by Lauren Bevan. Yeah, because so. yeah. they were good color job, coordinated. Everybody's wearing red or green or something or black, and she has like clothing from different eras and as he pointed out at some time like it looks very like 60s they say they mentioned uh emma peel so yeah diana uh, reagan yeah, the avengers yeah. So yeah. The 60s uh, yeah. london that's mm-hmm. what she yeah. says uh, yeah. i've picked up a few things along the way yeah, yeah. 900 yeah. years old because right. we first see i think it's supposed to be like this is classic gothic imagery obviously from dracula the boat pulling into um new york harbor mm-hmm this is bringing the vampire to New York Harbor. Um, so she arrives and apparently goes to, a, you know, crashes a Halloween party and meets Sam. And he is instantly smit. He's in deep smit with her. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, drunk acting. We were talking about Harvey Keitel and Two Evil Eyes. How mm-hmm. how uh, how believable was Larry Fessenden's drunk act? I think he was actually drunk. I was gonna, I was going <laughs> to say the same he thing. Was very annoying. Yeah. Like, uh, yes. You, you look at him and you're just like, uh, again, I don't want to deal with this drunk dude. Like I don't want to deal with this guy. You're it desperately was, trying not to catch his attention at the party because you just know you won't be able to get away from yeah. him. It yep. was so accurate. I was triggered. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> not going to lie. I know. Yeah. It's pretty good it, because, I mean, I think at the party, people are reacting to him that way. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like they just, he's knocking things over. He's completely yeah. unaware of, you know. I how, feel like there's, I mean, I don't know about the original movie, but I feel like there's a good chance this party was actually just happening anyway. Anyway, and they yeah. Oh, definitely, because that's how these things work. Yeah, yeah. You, you, the party is the first thing, and right. like, oh, we're also going like to Nick was actually yes. having a party, so like, well, oh. let's just film it. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Guaranteed. They. Though all those people, when he comes back upstairs to get his coat, are just like, oh fuck, I thought he's we were back. rid of him. Yeah. And he's back. Yeah. <sighs> Well, been mean, there. Also been there. <laughs> that's the that's what I'm saying. This like, is like so real that uh, it's when actually. When you're like, okay, now we can really party everybody. the asshole left. And right. then, they, then they find an excuse to come back. Like, just oh keep the God. coat, dude. Yeah. Just keep it. There is like this brief subplot, I guess, which is also, is it a Dracula thing? It's a vampire movie cliche. There's another character who is also under the, because the idea I think that's supposed to take place 
uh, Sam realizes that he's got the wrong coat, so he has to go back and he leaves Anna mm-hmm. on the street. And then when he comes back, she's not there. But Mm -hmm. I think she went back and picked up his friend, uh, Larry. Yeah, Larry. Larry. Lenny. 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 (laughs) Went and picked up Lenny. (laughs) Lenny. And because Lenny's talking about this girl that he met at the at the party and they're having crazy sex. And like and he starts looking off the guitarist. Yeah. Okay. The, the, so the sound guy that wouldn't do his job. Oh, yeah. the sound guy. Yeah. Okay, so just, okay. Larry Fessenden yeah, yeah. is definitely in a band and definitely hates the sound guys, right? Because he makes them oh, out to sure. be assholes for in sure. this movie. Yeah, and I know because unfortunately I've dated musicians in my life. They do hate the sound people because yep. the sound people will never set things up the way they want them to. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Never. It's it's a hundred percent accurate. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> sound people are just fucking weird to be in with. Yeah. But yes, they're their own type of weird. Yeah, though. they're that's a yeah. Sound people. I love you. <laughs> we're nothing without you but you're fucking weird yeah um so uh he does meet up with uh anna again of course as uh vampires do they just find you even if oh, yeah. uh, you lose their phone numbers they're just there yeah, uh you're a, whoosh, yeah they show up and yeah. because it's at like the uh that was the other thing that we had a little bit of a thing with like a new york block party takes place in an alley and they install ferris wheels this is great like just in the in alley. alley so as you're going around the ferris wheel you're mm-hmm. like just going like five feet away from somebody's window yeah once again everything's rickety and dirty oh yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah everything's falling apart that yeah. ferris wheel is clanky yeah. like i mean even a good Ferris wheel still are op- operated by a carny and still right. can fold up in a day. Well, this, so, right. right. Okay. Yeah. And, and this, this is, is even 90s, worse. I don't think, uh, I mean, just, just based on the look of this movie, like their health codes are not up to date. No. Like, like I mean, none of this stuff is, is maintained. Well, like this was just the nineties. No one cared. Yeah. That's what it felt I, like. That's just, what I got from this movie. Like the 90s they're just the trying to survive West. it. Yeah, they're yeah, just yeah, trying to survive like, this. Yeah. Yeah. This is when, because 80s, everyone was just like, woo, we don't have to do anything. And then the nineties are just like, we, you guys have to, make sure all this is done and everything that's why everybody became depressed in the 90s and they also got on heroin or something i mean uh, yeah. it was like a Drugs human, also yeah. thing because it feels yeah. like that leeches over into the movies and every oh, time that sure. they did a vampire movie even like blade by the time they did blade that was what 96 97 mm-hmm. right somewhere in there yeah. that also feels like there's a the the, the heroin chic era mm-hmm. you know it just creeps into everything and in, yeah, in that pairs of sexy sore drugs now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. At least in indie films of that yeah, era, it right. seems like they're a lot preoccupied with mm-hmm. heroin. That's why I'm surprised that movies. this one yeah. doesn't. But it's it does, you know, like they substitute. talk around it, I feel they like. They do, yeah. yeah. Instead of just outright saying you it. could slide it in there easily. Well, yeah. because he starts getting sick. He gets sick in a way that um He looks like a junkie. Yeah. He's well, acting yeah, like a junkie. Ex girlfriend yeah. says you look strung out right now. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know. And he always and nothing um, about him is helping. But not he's a, like this is one of those things like he has wounds. You know, like this is the yeah. thing. Like no, he just, like the whole vampirism thing in this, it seems like a huge allegory for heroin. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Or some kind of sexually transmitted disease. That's yeah. what I was getting out that of the too. like Oh yeah, with the lip and everything. They kept and talking and about his herpes. And, yeah. yeah. And he's you know, finding and whatnot, yeah. cuts and bruises that he doesn't remember or cuts, open wounds that mm-hmm. he doesn't remember how he got them because uh, she's feeding on him, I guess, like slowly. Um, a little bit at a time, Gallon. Right? But did she choose him because basically he's committing suicide on the installment plan? Like he says that earlier. I mean, like this is a self-destructive kind of guy, right? right. He's got yeah. no, well, as you were right. saying, you know, he has no uh, like defined end game here. It's like, yeah. what are right. you doing with yourself? Nothing. Yeah. So she picks him as like her victim. Yeah, right. well, yeah. She can, she can see that he's an alcoholic, that he's self-indulgent, that he can't handle a relationship. So obviously he's going to indulge in this sexual chaos. Right. And so. if he happens to go missing like that his lifestyle will lend itself yeah, to him being his, gone mm-hmm. without exactly her being suspected. he's now officially like his both of his parents are dead like yeah but he's a prime candidate he has a lot of reasons to justify his behavior it seems like yeah. and the thing with addicts is they'll just move from one thing to another yep. to avoid trade addictions sort of sobriety yeah exactly. trade addictions mm-hmm. yeah yeah i mean i guess um they um well, she ends up, well, I guess, you know, that's like they embark on this like hot sexual uh, relationship. Yeah. At first, it's just like a rebound because he's just gotten out of his relationship with Liza. Mm-hmm. And so he's treating it like a person would treat a rebound. It's mm-hmm. just much. It's getting very intense. Yeah. Because she comes yeah. on and I'm like very, very strongly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Their first date, she jerks him off in a park. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There you go. Like you do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
That's why you don't go walk around parks in New York at night. That's <laughs> why. Getting jerked off. One of the many reasons. That's why. <laughs> One of the <laughs> many reasons. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. A best case scenario, you're seeing someone getting jerked off. That's there it like is. The best case scenario. <laughs> yep, there it is. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> Yeah, you never know what you're gonna walk yeah. Yeah, on uh, at night. That's mm-hmm. why you just don't go out at night. You just uh, you can go just, out, just don't go to the park. Oh, okay. Well, I wasn't in a park and I saw some crazy shit. I mean, like you know. Wait, is this tell? a story you need to tell? <laughs> I, know, I was like, what are you talking about? Well, was I used recently? to live near a bar. No, this is years ago. Oh, I was there you near go. A bar, yeah. but, I see some shit. Yeah, but it wasn't. Uh, you know, there was like a fence. Of, uh, dividing after uh, my neighbor's property. There was like me, my neighbor, then the parking lot, and then you know. And yeah, you'd hear uh, like I couldn't believe that these people were screwing up next to the fence with a dog. The neighbor's dog's like, <laughs> right at him? I'm like, that's some kind of like concentration. That's commitment, yeah. That they've that got right there. That's, yeah, wow. yeah. That's literally yeah. animal like. Yeah, yeah, the animals are like, I yeah. know what's going on here, and right. yeah, it's kind wow. of crazy, uh, crazy <laughs> shit. Mm-hmm. Props if they could finish. <laughs> that's what I'm. Yeah, right. you wonder. You yeah. walk by it, and you're like, what am I supposed right. to do here? You just keep walking. You know, yeah. yes. Well, yeah. I guess that depends on how you are as a person. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Whether you stop and wait. Yeah, and mm-hmm. depends on your involvement in the yeah, scenario. Yeah. <laughs> well, like, I imagine they were not sober either. I you know, so, assume that. Yeah, right. And more power to them if they were. Mm-hmm. Like the characters in this movie. Well, mm-hmm. Anna is yeah. never seen, of course, as a vampire. She uh, never uh, eats, drinks, uh, smokes, mm-hmm. does anything. Um, and we don't see her in the daytime at all, right? There's one do. scene that I feel like I we do. She's like got sunglasses daylight, or when she and when she shows up to uh, the house in oh. upstate by the ocean. That's correct. Yeah, she shows up during the day. Yeah, there's some, yep. there's, there's dressed like Jackie O for some reason. <laughs> yeah, the sunlight thing is not a part of this right legend. At no, all, but the, he says at one point he says that he never sees her in the daytime. And I was yeah. like, mm, but you did. But we have movie wise. Like but he wake, saw her. Oh, well, I mean, you're right. He he also has mm-hmm. seen her, but we wake up and the sun shining in on them. As yeah, yeah. He and like she kind of fades thing. away. He claims yeah. that yeah. she's never been in the daylight, but we've seen her in the daylight. Yeah, yeah. But as yeah. far as like the vampire rules go, daylight doesn't seem to be a thing that kills her. But no. uh, she does seem to have an aversion to garlic. Not a fan uh, of it. And she has to be asked in. Yeah. Yep. You're flying, man. We're not. We're not <laughs> given. <laughs> we're not given any sort of context as far as like crucifix or anything like that there's no, no religious context he does look anything. for it at one yeah. point when he's also towards the end he, the he takes his dad's cross yeah, from the but from there the is box. no indication that that has any effect on anything in yeah. fact it's not seen after that i don't think uh, he grabs a knife instead becomes very 90s emo in his yeah. dad's abandoned apartment because it takes him a while to actually well i don't know Beautiful i mean like apartment. you know uh, it's for all intents and purposes, this is a vampire movie, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, I guess you would say it's a horror movie, um, but it does take a while to go. Um, well, I guess it's always like basically saying, yeah, she's a vampire. We know she's a vampire, like right off the get go. Right. Mm-hmm. It's like, how long does it actually take him to figure it out? Then for like, you know, uh, then you go into the third act where, you know, the stakes get raised is, you know, <laughs> Ah. Yep. Got it. Nice. Uh, <laughs> Do you stakes? You get it? Got it. Okay, good. Thank you. Just making sure. Yep. But Audience. to get there, we've got all sorts of like interpersonal drama. We've got lots of awkward sex. sex. So, There's but this conversations is conversations yeah. that go on for far too long. There's a lot of awkward sex in this yep. movie. Um, You're watching two gross people look like they haven't showered in months have sex yeah. together. It's not and it's appealing. Awkward enough that it looks real. Yeah. Kind of does, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, that's the, real, the quote unquote realism of this movie. Yeah. I wouldn't. Uh, yeah, like, there is be nothing surprised. glamorous about these encounters. No. No. <laughs> no, no. Again, this is all very real. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because it has a. Um, well, we've said it was, was released unrated, but um, I mean, it it pushes the boundaries, I suppose, of what you. I mean, I'm not saying that it's not. Well, I was going to say it's not explicit. Is it explicit? I think so. I think it's so. It's fairly explicit. Yeah, I, okay. But maybe that's because movies we get now are so neutered in comparison. Maybe it feels that way just because yeah. we, like, I couldn't tell you the last time I saw a more recent movie like this, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. I think in comparison, it's, uh, like I said, I don't think we get too much of this now, so it can mm-hmm. seem a little more. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I don't think it's too, it's not too crazy. Yeah. I mean, I remember oh. at the time not thinking, you know, it was more than what you'd see in maybe, yeah. uh, 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 you know, outside of like even basic instinct or whatever it was right. you know we were also going through the uh, the erotic I was thriller say it's no dress to kill yeah <laughs> I'll, I'll say right that. um Ooh. i got the vipers the vapors are coming back <laughs> um there's a lot of uh as you were saying um uh 
awkward dialogue. Um, yeah. Because mm-hmm. it's mostly, it seemed like, um, like I thought Fessenden himself did a pretty good job of being believable in most of the scenes that he was in. Um, it was more his uh, friend. Nick. Nick. The glasses. Yeah. Right. Because this is the bad. setup. He There's, was real bad. Nick is some kind of he's also like some theater drama he's very guy, right? theatrical because he yes. wears um we he were introduced to him he comes in wearing a very uh he's got his black coat over which i don't think he's got his arms or the sleeves i don't know but that just seems to be the way <laughs> and he's got a purple scarf that is not just laying on his shoulders like if you saw he'd be like mm, you're a pretentious art critic that's mm-hmm. that's yep. kind of a thing we're getting but yep. not but it doesn't feel like he's a professional at anything i don't know what nick does in this movie but He's yeah. an artist who works at a coffee shop. Is he? <laughs> no, I don't know. Oh, seems like he it. seems. I mean, that seems like yeah. It's like, yes, like I'm an artist, tr- but he actually works at a coffee yeah. shop. Yeah, but like he's trying to craft his like artist personality yes, and like that's his what thing. It feels like. And he's like, this purple scarf will be my thing. Yeah, yes. like yep. if, if for no other time than today. Yeah. But yeah, for like, for that day later on, it's a fedora. It's like <laughs> right. oh, a beret. We saw a beret. Yeah. We did see a beret. It's like trying to give yourself a nickname. It's like, dude, it's not gonna yeah. happen. Just Calm just down, stop. Yeah. It's too bad he wasn't wearing the beret at some mm. point, but he's got the fedora, so I guess yeah, he has the fedora and the glasses and everything. Um, it was like Elvis Costello. Yeah, I had problems with some of like his line deliveries. Um, some, some. Well, yeah, he's he, very you know I stagey. Well, yes, he is very yes. stagey. A lot of this, you kind of. I've seen a lot of early filmmakers and movies and stuff like this. I've been a part of some as well that feel like this, so it feels very early. He's performing for the back row. That's yeah. for sure, yes. right? Yeah, you know, definitely. they all they all definitely are. But he's yeah. So I think that's always the danger, though, if you direct a movie that you're starring in, because then you don't you have yeah, you don't have like that kind of objective mm-hmm. perspective. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you don't have the distance behind. from it. Yeah. Right. And it's yeah. not like he's got instant. He definitely does not have instant playback. He's got no. Pl- I'm guessing no playback on something. Not like on you sixteen. Just got, unless no, he's got, got sh- like a tap, no. video tap or something. No, never. you shoot it a few times and then cut it later. Yeah, yeah you just yeah. gotta figure it out later and see what you got and what you do with it. Apparently, he didn't do coverage on that scene. What I wanted to say was that I think because of that scene, we're kind of laying a lot at that character's feet as far as not being great. Which yeah. what Colin was saying, I think it was he wasn't bad for the rest of the movie. I don't think. Yeah, because that's a like a late like reveal scene where the two of them have like a heart to heart um yeah. where it's yeah where it's basically Fessenden's character is trying to you know he's like I yeah, think she's I'll, a vampire I'll you give know? you that he's fair he's tolerable enough up he's, until that point it's because right. the scenes are shorter yeah that, that is true much, we're getting yeah. him in small doses yeah but that this scene one, but, the, but that scene is specifically <laughs> is the is it it hurts me in, it does in my soul because it, it is so the secondhand it, embarrassment is just it too is, much yeah, it's oh so it's bad like we're just we're gonna get this scene it's two characters just in front of the camera there's and th- barely i mean they kind of back and forth but they're just they're, no they are they're they are chewing that dialogue and they think they the think they're making something great yeah and, because i think he's equating yeah. he's trying to like sam is sitting there you know saying uh, i'm telling you that this girl is like biting me in a way that's bad mm-hmm. for my health and his friend is saying, like, like don't you understand? Vampirism is all around us. It's everywhere. Yes. It's the culture sucking uh, us all to death. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's always it's got a pretentious one-upmanship yep. answer. It's always like, no, man, you don't understand. Like, it, oh, God. It's, it's like, you don't get it, man. The whole world. It, like exa- yeah. Everything's a conspiracy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it I does just, go on yeah. fairly it's long. Because, yes. Well, that's also where you know, he, he does say, Nick is like, you know, for God's sakes, maybe you could even lay off the booze and that would help your, your right. situation. Oh, and and then he tells him to take an AIDS test as well. Yeah. At this point. But this, yeah. But it's then like, he also mm-hmm. says, how about you have a drink right after well, he right. says. Yeah, this but is that's tough. because I think something, there's a dynamic that shifts, but I don't think the scene accomplishes it in the way that they, that the writer thinks that he did where if you have Sam almost like breaking down and being like, I'm losing my mind here. You know, I'm cracking up. And the other guy's like, oh, dude, yeah, no, everything's going to be fine. Uh, hey, have a drink. You calm know, down, it's like, calm down. yeah, he's yeah. calling. He's, uh, okay. Yeah, it didn't play out. That it doesn't way. play no, out that way. because it's like an abrupt shift, and you're like, wait, what? The what? You were telling him don't take a drink a minute ago. Now you're encouraging uh, it. I don't. Yeah, because I don't think Fessenden didn't play. He plays it. Um, I'll say one note, but he plays it straight in that scene where he, he's supposed to change, yeah. so the other character can change. He plays he it. Without, he plays it without transition. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. 
I agree. The um, the vampire eventually moves her way through like his social circle. This is a Thanksgiving movie, also. It was also kind of. <laughs> I, was, I was thinking yes, about was picking it for Halloween because it starts on Halloween and it does climax around Thanksgiving. Um, but uh, I mean, there's also this. there's like happens Nick. for all of us, right? We all start on Thanksgiving, climax around. Right on. <laughs> <laughs> start start here's, at Halloween. Here's hoping, yeah. Sean. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, it's next week, folks. Get it. Get your, <laughs> your dates lined up. Everyone, get yours. <laughs> the um, get stuffed. Okay, but we the, can move on now. Well, I just uh, the the, well the the vampire like moves through his circle so much. You know, sees. Uh, I mean, I guess there's some like they play it off like uh, she does find um, his ex girlfriend to be a, a like a threat. Even though you're like, okay, if his if her reason for choosing him is that she's gonna you know she's just gonna drink his blood and drink his blood like what threat from a you know like relationship perspective is the girlfriend right like it doesn't feel real you know it's like what would she what is their threat i guess yeah considering that yeah she's, she's gonna kill him she's anyway still doing what she's doing what is their threat besides from like making him come to his senses at some point is the only thing but i think she chose wisely in the fact that you know, he's an alcoholic and he's got problems. So I don't think he's going to come to his senses anytime soon. Yeah, it's the idea, I suppose, like just isolating him, right? So he I doesn't so. have any mm-hmm. anywhere to fall back on. But he, she does go and actually kill the, the ex-girlfriend. Mm-hmm. We think this is all done in some kind of like kaleidoscopic. The editing starts to become more frenetic and we're mm-hmm. not sure if like he's actually, if he's hallucinating, you know, because of his uh, his sickness or if this is actually happening for real, he mm-hmm. dreams of himself like, you know, going on this boat and there's all these crazy masked figures there. And mm-hmm. we're like, and he finds Nosferatu. Yeah. Nosferatu in a crate on a party boat. Yep. It's a booze cruise. Yeah. Is this <laughs> like, so are there a bunch of vampires out running yeah, around? Yeah, because we see a vampire looked, orgy. Yeah. We I see, was like, is this, the, is this the Brides of Dracula? Is yeah. That what we're seeing here? It, it, I think it was because we yeah. saw, so we saw Nosferatu in the crate. Right. Which, cool but why yeah (laughs) and then we see yeah it looks like the brides of dracula having an orgy right and then we see a guitar playing vampire and then we're out of it was that lenny was lenny on the boat maybe that might have been Lenny. you didn't see his face he was like in shadow that might have been lenny yeah lenny has joined the ranks of the why does this happen who knows part of the sickness yeah it's part of his sickness but it's also like kind of expanding on the mythology of like who she is where she came from all this other stuff so she maybe she is traveling with the boat but we don't don't see her in that scene though so we don't get the no there's no connection made yeah they're kind of just playing it yeah they're just they're just doing stuff yeah i'm gonna say artistic vampires on a boat we can shoot on a boat today guys so vampires on a boat and I think I, I, <laughs> I think there's a lot of that in this film. I think they're at I think they're at like a um, planning meeting, and they're like, "Guys, we got the Yankee. We, what are we gonna yeah. do with it? <laughs> what are we gonna do? On a boat? Yeah, yeah. 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 I was like, oh, well, it had to be deliberate though. If he's you know trying to do the Demeter, you know, the Dracula yeah, boat yeah, or yeah, whatever, yeah. that's even Vampire in Brooklyn, which I think was also 19. I was gonna say that earlier when we were uh, talking about it. <laughs> Vampire in Brooklyn. <laughs> um. But, you know, the idea that, you know, they, they've come from, but I guess it's the thing. She doesn't seem like she's old world, you know, in well, that Well, it's way not even. an old world boat either. It's like a n- modern yacht. Like, it's not, there's nothing to connect this to any sort of mythology or world building. It, yeah. And then he I even says, oh, like, it was just a dream when he wakes up. Or something. I, feel, yeah. I don't think he wants to necessarily. I don't think that's his goal. I feel like this. at best this boat's like 70 years old. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I took it as like because he's like infected with her. Well, I guess he he deliberately refuses to drink her blood at a point when you know toward the end. Or she right. Well, I mean, I guess I, I mean I'm giving it a lot of credit here, but I guess that is part of like vampire mythology and lore is that once they've drank from you, then you've got some sort of connection where you mm-hmm. start to like dream about them and yeah. that kind of thing. But he so can't I, make sense of it, right? He's a, so I guess that is kind of part of vampire lore, having these visions. Yeah. But I mean, still. it works. Just like you know, if you, I'm sure if you drink someone's blood, there's something of you that will end up also in the person. <laughs> I'm assuming. So you know, it's 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 like he didn't drink the blood, but she's in him. Yeah. Okay. But she is like out to kill him. She kills Eliza, then she uh, his because, cat and his cat. His poor cat. True. The cat that does not Another yeah. fucking cat, cat murder. Another didn't, unnecessary. I didn't but, need it. But is she, I mean, is her end game just to kill him or does she eventually want to turn him? I, okay. So because this is the, the question this, I have yeah. about this movie. Because 
why so is he just sick because she she's using him like a juice box? <laughs> right. <laughs> like or is he sick because he's turning? Right. That's my question too. I was very unclear. Not then, clear on that. Especially at the end. Yeah. Because it seems like she wants to keep him. Right. She gives I'm him very, yeah. 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 I mean, I guess I see what, you know, the idea that that he'd be turning, it depends on which version of vampire lore I, I guess that you subscribe to. It's just getting bit enough they don't to, explain it to us. turn yeah. you into a vampire, or do you have to actually drink the, the vampire's blood? There has to be a blood exchange. Because there is a happen. moment when she offers it to him. Yeah, at mm -hmm. the end, during the climax, yeah. where she's like attacking him all over the apartment, and he's trying to fend her off, and she does like bite her own hand and offer it to him, and he's like, no, and then... She just continues to attack him. Right. <laughs> and yes. then and have sex with him at the same time. Cause yeah. And so does he to her. Like, there is still that I know, uh, carnal a, connection that they have in the middle of this whole thing going on. Everyone's well, bleeding and biting, and there's still sex. Because he's kind of under a spell. Right. Yeah. He's, also, yeah. he's, a, he's also addicted. Like, he can't. He, I'm sure he wouldn't want to, but there's the addiction coming back. Just yeah. Like, I have to Because he's, this. like, weak-willed. I guess that's the yeah. thing you know, when you're talking about an addiction. You know, it's like uh, you, there's some things you just can't say. You just can't, like, steal yourself or uh, bit, say no to. It's a bit rapey. And uh, apparently it feels like warm milk flowing oh, through your Oh, I forgot so. about that. Why would you bring it up? Just think, uh, warm milk flowing through your veins. Uh, just blah, warm blah. milk, stop there. Stop. If you're starting a sentence with warm <laughs> well, milk, just stop Well, she it. does always seem to, like, get him to orgasm and then bite him right in that See, moment. See, that's which... what it feels like then. So it feels like an orgasm. Don't say it feels like warm milk going through your veins. Stop saying like, or orgasm and I, warm well, milk I, together. I think, <laughs> that's, I think that's the heroin analogy again. Mm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, but, like, uh, you're welcome. Uh, <laughs> but, like, <laughs> but, like, who knows what that feels like? Who knows? Like, that's not... Larry like, Fessenden apparently Larry Fessenden like. has done but, heroin. <laughs> usually when you, you I believe it. usually when you're speaking in metaphor it's to make a relatable comparison to someone he's relating milk to through my veins is not a relatable comparison no i'm not no. saying yeah. it's good that, no, or that, effective yeah. but that i think that's strong, what it is that is just a, uh, <laughs> yeah. a thought like you're, yeah you're going off to the stars and you're like it's like warm milk running through my veins <laughs> he was high as fuck, fuck when he that. Yep. <laughs> definitely yeah yeah, it. Um, <laughs> he looked over to his mom. He's like, "You ever feel that?" <laughs> <laughs> sure, sweetie. Yeah. Maybe he's <laughs> just talking. He's talking to like a specific group of. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, like, who's the audience for this? I guess as far as like, Good it's gonna be, you know, well, obviously, like vampire fans will find it. It's on Shutter right now. It just showed up, um, but they also put out. Uh, the addiction has shown up on there too, so it's like we're doing the '90s vampire. Have we movies. got a double feature for you. <laughs> and you, so you got to find Nadja. That's the other one with Peter Fonda's in that one, and um, oh. uh, Jared Harris. I think he's oh, like nice. the vampire kind of. Okay. Yeah, it's okay. about Dracula's daughter. Um, Martin, what's that guy's name? Was in no, no, no. It's like Martin Donovan. He was in Lawrence. all of those like indie movies of that period of time. Sure. I wish it was Martin Lawrence. I, <laughs> yeah. I might watch How it many then? Martins yeah. you got in there? Yeah, I'm going to keep going. Yeah. Martin. It is Donovan, I think. Yeah. Uh, I think I think we got it. But uh, <laughs> there are more Martin. Uh, Martin Lewis. No, that's nobody. No. Okay. Uh, so the movie wraps up with a climax that finds our hero dangling out the seventh story window of a New York brownstone. Um, this is pretty horrifying because you know they were actually just dangling those actors out of a yeah, window uh, when you, and hoping for the best. Yep. When you are this low budget, um, you know you're. This was not when safe. When someone's hanging out of a yeah. window, it doesn't. It's probably not safe. That's this why was he wasn't safe. like out the window. Like right. his back half was, but there, uh, you could tell yeah, it was like a. There's a weight is on this side. But of the she window. was leaning out the window, holding yeah, him, and not, that was what made me nervous because they could both easily. Then the weight could. Yeah, tip. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You're like, is there a strap going on there somewhere right. that's Hope actually so. holding? Somebody's got somebody's but feet. Even from the outside angle, I guess you're able to see them like hanging. You know, yeah. I mean, because it, it does kind of. It has that. You know, we're just not, we're just gonna do it. You know, like don't worry, it'll be fine. We'll, we'll just get the shot. I'll jump out real quick and jump back in, kind of. Yeah. You know, feel to it. Um, but okay, so then, so what actually happens here in the ending? Um, we they both go out the window apparently. Um, both Sam and the vampire Anna, and they're found by Nick and his uh, girlfriend splattered out on the street. So yeah. she can die. Well, she disappears. She disappeared. She, she disappeared. Did. There's did a, there's a camera movement where it goes back to looking at all of them, and she's no longer. Oh, she's no I missed that. There, laying next to the body. Yeah. Okay. She's gone. But that's one of those things where you read it as like, was she ever really there? Was well, she this is just in his head. Yeah. Was this this is one the thing. of those kind of like he actually did have some other 
like well, other people interacted with her. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She, but is she he made like, she made out with his best girlfriend? That's right. Ray, who yeah. uh yes, right at the horse farm when they go to Thanksgiving yep. dinner at grandma's place, uh where uh, the vampire shows up as a muck encrusted covered in mud yeah, for some reason. Mud. Yeah. Interesting choice. Yep. Yeah. Didn't really matter. That's what I'm saying. I think that was supposed to just be like, well, this is the way I read it. It's like, okay, you're actually seeing the creature as it actually is like you know not oh. as anna it's just like this is a it's a creature okay you know? i have a question about a scene that i totally forgot about until now sure but when i think it's like post wake for his dad mm-hmm. oh, yeah, um and she speech. shows up unannounced uh-huh. and when he's talking to that old guy and first and like she, she looks like that, liza for she second? looks like liza what the fuck was that all about right that was, that's, she I has think... a glamour going that she looks like liza or is it just the way that he Sees like hoping it was Liza, maybe no, but the or, person that sees it is the old guy he's talking to, right? Because they're true. talking about so, Liza. Yeah. yeah, what the fuck was that? Just show up for that, yeah, and that was weird. Flip and it goes back. I don't understand that either. And it never came back, never meant anything. Yeah. There was a few, I think that's the purpose. There was a few blips like that where I, it was like a flash of an image. I'm like, what the fuck was that for? Yeah, yeah, is yeah. he confused? You know, because I mean, it'd be something if it was his perspective and he was confusing, but it wasn't. Something. Yeah, it was yeah. a straight a person that never comes back into yeah, the story. That confused well, the me too. Never acknowledges that they saw right. the ex girlfriend. Yeah. It, yeah. it, you know, it is so. a it is one shot. She walks in as a person, and then we flip mm-hmm. to another shot, and she's back to being Anna. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and that scene was interesting too because she presents him with a gift. So I guess his dad was an archaeologist. <laughs> oh yeah. Or something. What do we even know what it is? It's this, a little this carving. This doesn't mean anything either. Person. Well, the impression I had was that it's a little garbage that, person. Uh, there, you know, because his dad was an academic and I think he was, a, a, an archeologist. And so these other professors recognize that the thing that she's giving to him as a, as a gift is some kind of like priceless but who cares, Colin? thing. What, well, what does this matter to the movie though? I think it's, it's another just, thing to add to her age that it's to her age that she's <laughs> but, but like Michaela is violently shaking her hands <laughs> right to the, the plot of this movie pulling out her hair. what does it matter it doesn't this whole scene could not. be cut out and it doesn't fucking matter you are Ouch. correct you are correct it doesn't matter we already got the hint that she's been around for forever with the with the fashion comment and mm-hmm. I picked up things along we we know mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. we know Yes. Yeah, again, it just I, yeah, doesn't I, matter. I appreciated it, but I also, I guess, like the whole scene because it was like him. You know, he, it's like what he was saying about you know his dad had to live with disappointments. It's like you know, in his professional. All his career, dad's storyline like, could be completely cut out from this movie. It doesn't matter. Like well, none of yeah, the dad like, stuff it's, matters. It's, yes. <laughs> it does kind of because it's how? Like how the very first thing we see is photos of his dad, and every single photo of his dad's got well, what a does beer that pay in his off? hand. Okay, it doesn't we, matter. We, we don't can get the fact he's an alcoholic without it being a hereditary condition. Yeah, we don't need that. He demonstrates that well enough on his own. Exactly. That's true. He does. He but is. I guess then this is purely at for one point Larry his dad actually shows therapy. up. Therapy. Mm-hmm. He does. Graveyard. He does show up. Yep. Well, he shows up in the house and at, kind of at like one a point, warning. wearing that hat and drinking a beer. That yeah. was a warning. That's I, what you got from it. That's why wow, I read mm-hmm. it. All right. Yep. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. <laughs> Dean Martin. There you go. There's another yeah. Martin. Yeah. There you go. Donna Martin. 90210, anybody? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Tori Spelling's character. <laughs> yep. Oh, Donna. Donna Martin graduates. That must have been no. a character. Yep. Yeah, Sorry. yeah. I was, I was watching. You want to see a prime example of nepotism? It's right there. <laughs> oh, the d- Martin Scorsese. Mm-hmm. How did we miss that one? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Did you All see right. Freeman? Oh, Martin Freeman. Martin Freeman. Yeah. 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 Okay. Martin Sheen? Mm-hmm. Martin Sheen. There's a lot of Martins. Jesus. Yeah. More Martins than you think, mm-hmm. but not enough Martins. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. All right. Not enough Martins. All right. Well, well let's get out of this. We'll, we uh, we'll hit the eject yeah. button and call yeah. our mailman so we can answer mm-hmm. some of your mail. And his name is Igor. Bring us the mail. Masters. Masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising. Rising. Why, thank you, Igor. Fun fact, his middle name is Martin. <laughs> <laughs> What's his last name? Don't know. Oh. He's Igor Martin. That's uh, Only when he's in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Igor Martin. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Wait, Igor was his middle name? Yeah, 
Yeah. Okay. Oh no, Martin's has been lame. Wait, yeah, Martin's, yeah, Martin's Martin. Igor Martin. Yeah. Igor okay. Martin. Yeah. We just don't know his last name. Don't know his last name. We all right. Well, uh, we want to let you know how you can join in on this interactive portion of our show. All you got to do is follow along on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. On Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. You can email us. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Or you can follow along on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. About tonight's movie, Habit, Adam, Adam Kaler writes in and says, We decided to make this a family fun movie night, not oh. knowing what it was about. Yikes. And that proved to be interesting. We couldn't figure out what the movie was trying to say about alcoholism, vampires, or Thanksgiving. <laughs> It definitely had a first full production feel like a Kevin Smith's Clerks or the Soska Sisters' Dead Hooker in a Trunk. Two movies I like very much, but at the end of the day, it was an odd little vampire film that took too long to go full vampire. Those oh, are says, great comparisons, yeah, though. That's fantastic. It's says, a good point. P.S. It appears you have found a vampire movie that is not a better love story than Twilight. Oh, uh, I, I gotta agree with there that. You go. <laughs> there you go. Yep. Uh, Michael Whitaker says it's uh, the 90s was kind of a weird time for vampire movies. They're sort of not the undead monsters from the past. They haven't quite become the super popular phenomenon. They will become because of things like Buffy and Blade. For my money, is like as much as I like to watch the more popular versions of them, I do sort of miss the old vampires where you could they could be your friend and family one minute, but then shift into a bloodthirsty creature the moment they've turned. Don't we all? Right. Mm-hmm. Mm. About last week's movie, which was High Tension, Mark Harrison says this movie has the type of ending that tells the audience that everything they just watched was a waste of time. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no, you're not wrong. Yeah. You're yeah. not wrong. Yeah. Oh, tension. Yeah. And the previous week, we watched a movie called Skeleton Key. Grant Parrish says, after listening to this podcast, well, we can't actually read this. Unfortunately, it's a massive spoiler okay. for oh, the shit. Skeleton Key. Well, <laughs> well, we, well, we can still read yeah, it. Just, just let them tell know them that now. And they're then about to story it. Hear a okay. If you want to hear our wrap ups for Habit, you're going to have to jump about, I don't know what, like a minute. Go, go two get minutes there. ahead. Yeah. Okay. We're going to spoil the Skeleton Key. Here we go. Mm-hmm. Fair warning. In three, two, and one. Uh, Grant says, after listening to this podcast, I posed a question to my coworkers that basically broke it down to how do you recruit the next body? The answers were start a daycare. Children already want to believe in magic. Uh, additional points to have parents pay to have their children's changelinged. Uh, or you could join an online group for amateur Wiccans and spiritualists. You pretend to learn magic with them and, oh, you just happen to find a spell that seems cool. <laughs> or you can find someone in the trans community that would enjoy the swap. This coworker wasn't looking for perpetual immortality, but one body swap, and they'd live out that life. What would the freak show do? There you go. So uh, this is what I was saying. Franchise. Are, well, this is a great question. Those are great answers. I, I think, love that. Those are great. I like the idea of franchise. Well, I think we said that when on the yeah, episode. I think we said yeah. a franchise it at some yeah. point. Yeah. But like, I think you got to start there. early. I think I think I'm going to go like. I'm going to catfish people with like a fake sugar baby account, right? Because right. I want to go for the rich rich people right? right i want to have the best possible next life i can so yeah. i'm going i don't care how old they are i'm going rich <laughs> right because then i get the bank account and then i can find the next you know, body whatever yeah the money would make it easier yeah yeah exactly. yeah. yeah you gotta move I, I, so i'm catfishing you on dating websites that's what i'm doing so. <laughs> that's a that's a good idea okay. is this a movie Bye. Okay, well, uh, <laughs> copyright 2021 yeah, yeah. Saturday Night Freak Show. Yeah. All right, now we're going to go around the room and tell you what we thought of tonight's movie. <laughs> Sean's ready to get to it. Wow. <laughs> um, What'd you think? <laughs> about habit? <laughs> it's not for me. You know, it's not for me. <laughs> if it's for you, great. Enjoy it. <laughs> because I won't be taking it from you. So, you know, um, it's, I appreciate the effort and the passion behind student films. I appreciate... The like, damn. We'll find a way to do it. <laughs> Burn. You know, I appreciate the grittiness and the, like the commitment and the we'll figure it out somehow on the fly. Those are all great things to have and great qualities to have as a creative individual. So really tap into that and embrace it. Even if other people don't embrace your film, still keep doing it. Um, it's just not for me. It's too slow. It's, <laughs> on that it's, note, we're not embracing your yeah, film. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, I, I appreciate the craftsmanship, but the content is just not for me. It's too slow. It's too grating and too familiar in a way that it's unpleasant for me. And uh, I just like, there are certain things I don't wish to relive. And knowing people like this is one of those things. Yeah. So sure. going to pass on it. Sean, what do you think? Uh, Larry Fessenden. Um, I don't know. Uh, watching this movie tonight has made me curious about his other work. Um, but I think for things like this, I mean, this hit, this hit a chord for me tonight. Um, uh, movies like this, I don't want to watch 
too close together. I don't think I can handle the the feelings I get from watching movies like this because it reminds me of a certain time. Um, it reminds me of experiences I've gone through. Uh, it reminds me of people that I've known. Um, I like the movie because it does feel like it, it, it is a look into a very uh, and what, what feels like more and more as we move on what a very specific time period of filmmaking um, and it's I, I think it's it's fascinating to to watch these movies I don't know I feel like you kind of I, it feels like you kind of live with them I don't know it's it feels the movies feel very human and personal i mean we are talking about a movie with a vampire and all that stuff but it still feels like still feels like i said very human and personal um to recommend the movie i think i think yes um i think i will recommend it i it's it's an uh to me it's an obscurity it's an oddity um i don't revisit this um kind of area of filmmaking very much but that's like I said before. I think it's. I think it's. Uh, it, it, there are powerful feelings to be found in films like this. Uh, filmmakers like Larry Fessenden. Um, it's gonna make you feel weird feelings. I have a feeling if you go back and watch stuff like this. Um, I think we all felt it tonight. Um, but I think I think there's a worthiness to it. I'll. I'm curious about his other work. I'll watch other stuff. Um, uh, I agree. There is some. It is very early filmmaking in someone's career. There are moments like that conversation we talked about. That is a 10 minute scene where I don't ever want to sit through that again. So, I mean, it'll be a while before I come in and revisit this, but I'm curious about more work in this arena of filmmaking. So I'll recommend it. And I'm curious about watching more. So there you go. On, Ollie. The, on the Blu-ray, you not only get to see the eighties version of that scene, but the, like uh, the short. auditions. Oh yeah, the rehearsals. Oh, wow. Before that, that was like his centerpiece scene. I think that's why it was yeah. so hard. For oh me. boy, <laughs> You're right. He didn't, he didn't kill his darlings. Uh -huh. that? Oh yeah, he should have cut early. Yeah. Something. Holly, what'd you think? <laughs> I know what you thought. What'd you think? Sean, where did that come from? What you like expressly hated this movie the entire time we were watching it, and I now know, you're right. recommending but, it. <laughs> but I. Uh, this I, is what makes him the wild card. <laughs> I know, but but think about like possession. I think I did the same thing for possession like there is certain <sighs> i think filmmaking has a power and i think you like verbally stated okay. to disdain for this but while we were watching ha it. halloween kills got a reaction out of you but you did not recommend it i didn't but so that... like it's more than just getting a reaction well i know but i'm like i said i think i explained it clearly i think like the feelings that this era of filmmaking make me feel while they're they're weird and i don't necessarily it's not about enjoyment i think there's it it's complicated I, it's i don't necessarily have to enjoy a film all right to so sean is a masochist moving on. yeah okay I, I, I like the experience of movies and this gave me something i haven't felt in a long time so yeah i'm gonna recommend it oh, God. it's I just don't understand i don't think the era can be ignored wow you're an enigma this is a, this is just a personal thing holly um enough yeah. about okay. me yeah enough about what you, you think? sean my turn yeah um don't uh, recommend this movie go ahead yeah there you go. so this movie is pretentious, nonsensical drivel, and I hated every second of it. I would not recommend this for anyone. It is not for me. I don't know who this is for besides Callan and Sean, but you know, power to if you like it. No, I, I no, I take no offense. You know, obviously you do you, but no, I'm not going to recommend it because it sucked. Callan. Uh, well, I mean, uh, it's funny that. Um I guess Michaela, the the reasons that she didn't like it are like the same reasons that I do. And Sean, I get, I get where you're coming from, but I mean, like I said, it was like, oh, this is. I kind of had to bring the movie, you know, to kind of bring me back and kind of go through like this, like it's a therapy session trying to figure out like what I like about movies. And there's a, like a there's a lack of excitement that I'm having about movies now. And you know, when I watch something like Halloween Kills, it's because it seems like this uh, crafted um corporate entity and then when they go wrong with it then you're like well, this is just cheap you know there's nothing there these movies i guess do make you feel something about the human experience they do kind of stir up these like i mean I mean, I don't know. I feel like I'm a well-adjusted guy. Maybe I'm not. But, you know, what, like maybe I just like to feel gross when I watch movies. Uh, but I, I, I don't, You don't always want the same feeling for movies. I mean, again, we want it a lot, but... It, 
I okay, same feeling and gross feeling are two separate Very things. Different. Like, Very different. Just because well, I want a different well, feeling doesn't well, mean well, I want a gross well, feeling. The, well, the, but I'm not only getting the gross feeling. Yeah. Like that is not the only thing I'm getting. I felt well, that's all I'm getting is from. Oh, well, yeah, that's though, fine. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. Yeah. I, I under yeah. believe me. I've sat and watched. I understand. I felt yeah. very dirty watching. Yeah. That. I still feel dirty. Yeah, but I mean, still. it definitely does have that. But I mean, the the messiness and complication of like you know the the relationships and all that stuff. And I mean, it does have like this. Uh, I think it's just that era of indie filmmaking does have this kind of gritty realism. I hate that term, but I can't. Yeah, think, we're it, using it's so, it so easy much, to yeah. use, but you know, I mean, it's shorthand. But that doesn't seem like that's uh, justifying it. But um, yeah, I mean, I guess uh, I came to this movie through the independent film channel. It was the first time I saw it, and then I actually drove to Chicago to go see Wendigo, his movie, when that came out. So I've been a fan of this guy, you know, for years, and. Uh, he actually did a, an episode of fear itself. I think that's probably the closest he ever got to directing something of like a mainstream, you know, it was on NBC, you know, whatever it was masters of horror season three, basically. Um, but he never seemed to really, like really break through or embrace Hollywood. He's remained like in a kind of an iconoclast, you know, out there in New York, just doing his own thing. I guess I appreciate and respect that. Um, and as far as the work itself, um there's something really raw about this movie i guess that's what it feels like it feels like you're seeing too much of a person you know the, the in, a, in a movie now that you wouldn't go this far and it's like yeah and you're going like all all the way in and it's like okay so this is like a no holds barred kind of like uh you know uh, experience inside somebody else's skin uh, whether you like that, you know, or not, I don't think you're necessarily supposed to say like, you know, it felt good. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, it's a perspective other than, uh, my own. And it, I guess it didn't, you know, make me, um, and, and it is a horror movie. I suppose that's the other thing. So I, I assume that those kind of, um, intense, um, negative, uh, vibes. Maybe it's because some... I've seen through that window in real life too many times. Yeah. But I, I think that's also, also the part possible, of it. Yeah. You do see. That's what these movies kind of give you is like they they feel like a, a, a like a reflection or like a ghost of something that has, you know, that you've actually known. And I don't need that. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, mean, I lived it. I don't need to revisit yeah, yeah. it. Yeah. Well, I mean, to each, you know, I mean, I guess that's the thing where, you know, with movies, it comes down to, to each his own. So um, uh, if if what we've talked about, you know, you, you heard what we all said. So if you find uh, that that's appealing, then you should seek out habit. Like I said, it's. Currently on Shutter, they're not paying us. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, but they can. Um, but you can. But I would recommend that you definitely check it out. And I think, for comparison's sake, if you're a vampire fan, go watch all three of those, like uh, uh, the, weirdo yeah, the ones we mentioned, 90s, yeah. um, uh, New York vampire movies. But take just take your time. Like space it out. Oh no, no, no. Don't yeah, do all yeah, your drugs just, at once. Yeah, do them all at once and go like <laughs> there's Collins. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? Watch, watch this and then watch Only Lovers Left Alive. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. See yeah. Right? Okay, so there's a movie. Yeah, okay. That right. one's my speed, Colin. Okay, all yeah. right, gotcha. All right, so that's uh Habit. Now next week we're gonna watch a movie that's chosen by Sean. Where are we going next week? We're going to stay in the gross territory. Oh, boy. No but, pa no palate cleansing for us, huh? <laughs> no, no palate cleansing for us. Uh, staying in the muck. Staying, we're going to be watching Society. Fuck oh boy. you. <laughs> wow. I know the listeners have been asking for this one for a long time. So you're going to, so the mailbag will I'm be taking, full. Right. I'm telling you, the mailbag's going to be full. I'm taking it off the uh, listener request <laughs> month that is officially off the list. Society. All right. Society. All right. So we'll that, be upset, but our listeners will be happy. I'll, so. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll preface it by saying I know I'm bringing it, but I also have not seen this movie. So. Oh, Jesus Christ. I was, <laughs> I was just about to say there's no you way Sean's know what you're doing. Yeah, you okay, don't know so what you're doing. Three who have seen it, Ooh. one who haven't. Yeah. Uh, okay. All right. <laughs> oh, people are going to be mad at me, aren't they? <laughs> well, I know two at this table that might be. <laughs> Sean, you don't know what you've done. Uh, well. What have we, you done, I mean, Sean? <laughs> what have you I done? Think, uh, now they're pulling a off the band aid. Excitement <laughs> and anticipation yeah. for next week's episode. I yeah, can't I'm wait. Getting them frothed up. All right. Well, that's <laughs> next week on the Saturday Night Freak Show. We hope you'll join us as always. Thank you for sticking with us. And until then, the basement is going dark. <laughs>